good morning boys and girls and welcome to chapel it's so good to be with you again this morning and it's so good to be able to share god's word the bible with you this morning and man do we have a really cool story a double decker miracle that takes place in the gospel of mark which is the gospel that we've been looking at this whole lockdown time and even before lockdown began now to remind you a little bit of where we are in the story of mark jesus has just crossed the sea and we were told that on the sea there was this enormous storm that Jesus calms with a word. He says, be still, be quiet. And he showed the disciples and he shows us that he is more powerful, that he's stronger than the sea, than the wind and the waves. And they actually listened to Jesus. And then when he got to the other side of the lake or the other side of the sea, he was greeted by a man who had a legion of demons in him. And a legion is a number, a military number for many, many uh, soldiers and there were so many demons in this man that he says his name is legion he has this massive massive army of demons inside him and jesus is even more powerful and even stronger than the demons he just says to the demons get out of the man and they have to obey him they have to listen to him and so so far we've seen that jesus is stronger than the wind and the sea and it listens to him and he's stronger than a legion of evil demons he is so powerful and today in our story that we see that we're looking at this morning we see that jesus is even more powerful than sickness and even death he could even cure death so let's look at our story this morning together our story begins when Jesus arrives on the other side of the lake once again. He sailed again to the other side of the lake and he's greeted by a man whose name is Jairus. And Jairus has a little daughter. And Jairus says to Jesus, Jesus, please come really quickly. My daughter is sick. She's so sick. She's about to die. Please come and heal her. Please help me. And Jairus is so, so desperate. He wants Jesus to come immediately, quickly, because his daughter is about to die. And so Jesus says, I'm going to come with you. And he goes with Jairus and they're on their way to Jairus' house to go heal his young daughter. She's only 12 years old. But on the way there, we're told that there's another person in the story, a woman. And this woman has been suffering from a bleeding problem for the last 12 years. So for the last 12 years, she's spent all her money seeing many different doctors trying to get better. And the Bible tells us instead of getting better, all she got was worse and the bleeding problem never went away. And so she thinks that if I just touch Jesus' clothes, just the tip of his clothes, I will get completely well. I will get completely better. That's what she believes. And so while Jesus is on his way to Jairus' house, there's this crowd that's following him and they're all sort of ruffling and touching him. And she gets close enough to Jesus, touches his cloak, and she's healed. And she feels like she's healed. She feels healthy and she feels well again. And in that moment, Jesus realizes that power has gone out from him. And he stops. And he looks around and he says, who touched me? Now his disciples are, are shocked because so many people are touching him. Jesus, how can, you, how can you ask who touched me? Look at the crowd around you. They're all shuffling. They're all touching you. They're all bumping you. How can you ask who touched you? But Jesus stood there and he looked around at the crowd until eventually the woman comes out and tells Jesus the whole truth, tells Jesus what was wrong with her and tells Jesus what she did. And Jesus says, your faith has saved you go in peace your faith has made you well and he says that and he waits for her to come up because he wants everyone to know what it looks like and what it means to have faith in him that jesus has power to heal the sick and jesus is able to heal the sick and all of this points to who jesus is that he's not just a man like any other man but that he's god he was god in the flesh and only god has the power to just touch and make someone better now, while this is all happening, Jairus is still with Jesus. And one of Jairus' servants actually comes and says to Jairus, Jairus, I've got some very sad news for you. Your daughter has died. Why trouble the teacher anymore? And in that moment where you think Jairus would lose all hope, Jesus turns to him and says, Do not be afraid. Just believe. Believe in me and all will be well. 
And so Jesus and Jairus and the disciples carry on walking to Jairus' house. As they reach the home, there's all these mourners. They're all crying and wailing because the little girl has is, is died. And Jesus says to them, why are you crying? Why are you wailing? She's not dead. She's just asleep. And of course, they laugh at him because they know that she is dead. But Jesus says that because to Jesus, death is like sleep. It is so... Uh, it is not a problem to Jesus. He can wake people up from the dead, just like you and I might be able to wake someone up sleeping. It just shakes them. And so Jesus goes in with Jairus and Jairus' um, Jairus's wife and three of his disciples. And he says to the little girl, Talitha kum, which means, I tell you, little girl, get up. And she gets up. She was dead and she gets up and she's alive again. And he asks uh, Jairus to give his daughter something to eat to show that she's not just a ghost she's actually alive and she takes and she eats food and in doing that Jesus actually shows everyone that he has the power over death this girl who was once dead now walks out of the house and all the mourners who were there who thought she was dead or knew she was dead see her alive again and so Jesus shows us that he is stronger than sickness he's stronger even than death and he is not just any man, but that he's God in the flesh. He's the Son of God, and he's come to rescue us from sin. And just like he could save people from sickness and save people from death, he can save us from our sin. And that's the message that Mark is writing for us, and the message that he wants us to know, that in Jesus we can have forgiveness for our sins. I hope and I pray that you are all keeping healthy and safe, and I have loved seeing you all in class this last week and the week before, and I look forward to seeing you a lot more. God bless and goodbye.